what is happening? I've got a guide for you on how to complete Leah and honestly do it relatively easily and often under 30 minutes. But before we do that, I'm going to go over my gear really quick, go over my mods so you can see what I'm running. I'm running four pieces of Falcon. I've got heavy duty gloves. You can run whatever you want there. And then to pair with that, I've got the beret for all the shrapnel damage buff. The beret is absolutely critical for shrapnel builds. Obviously, we got Last Valor, and then we've got the Black Panther for our secondary. Here's kind of the attachments I'm running. There might be improvements here, but these work really well for me, and I think they're exactly what you want. On to the mods. I would love to get a better one in this slot, but this is what I'm running right now. I don't really find a lot of weapon mods. Especially through Leah, it seems all you get is really armor mods. On the Bray, take cover. The damage with them farther away is huge. We've got the shrapnel damage. We want to get as much of that on our mods as we can. And then crit damage as well. I'm running quite a bit of crit stuff, as you'll see throughout these other mods. For the mask, I've got the deadly focus. There's 15% crit rate right there. And again, with more crit damage and more rifle damage. So that's huge. Very strong. Bunch of crit rate, bunch of crit damage. Agile reloading, reload speed's huge with the last Valor with a little small clip size, more crit rate, more damage. Again, weapon damage, rifle damage, and more crit damage when activated. So you can see how we're really stacking up crit damage and crit rate on here. The body, I could use an upgrade here, but we do have a max roll on trigger chance for shrapnel. We've got some rifle damage, but we'd love to see that a little bit higher. Max HP is a pretty low roll as well. And finally, extra load. Again, reload speed bonus, and it puts more um, clip size in as you reload once you're empty. We've got, again, some shrapnel damage and weapon damage on that as well. So really stacking crit rate, crit damage, weapon damage, rifle damage throughout the build is the way to go. Quickly going over supplies. Got a bunch of activators. Quick activators seem to be the best, so I'm bringing 40 of those. You probably need at least 30 to 40 total activators, typically. Bringing a variety of elixirs. You can use whatever you like. I like wings, cocoons, spring legs sometimes. I pop predator here for no reason, but you can. Regeneration is huge if you have that. As far as ammo, minimum you want really is going to be tungsten. I'm using tungsten AP because we have frontiers producing stardust all the time, which means we're able to buy tons of acid and keep up with AP rounds. If you can swing it, definitely recommend the AP rounds. And you're looking for like 5,000 plus. And finally, make sure you have at least three adrenaline shots as that's how many you're allowed to use in here. self reses are huge. Now you can see as we enter in here, we've got two big purple people eaters. One has an ice colored shield around it and the other a fire. Ice on the left, fire on the right. And then what you have when you walk into this room is going to be two containment tanks that have a little radius circle around them. You need to kill the appropriate purple people eater deviant tall boy in the correct circle next to the correct tank. So ice needs to be killed while you're standing next to the ice tank fire just the same. Uh, on this first room, your fire tank is on your right and your ice tank is on your left, so it's super easy. We like to split up two and two and just take them both out. If you aren't familiar with killing these dudes, they've got three weak spots on their legs, and once you pop those, they drop to their knees for some super big crits on the head. You'll see once these guys die, their soul physically flies into the tank, and you can actually see it visually that there is now a soul trapped in there. And our other two teammates killed their fire guy just before we killed our ice guy, so we didn't even have to deal with any of the ad waves. As soon as both of are dead, the room is clear, and you can move on to the second boss. Okay, now the mechanic repeats from the first room, except now you've got five of these containment tanks. The third one you could barely, or you can't really see, it's behind the boss, Dr. Mannheim. What's gonna happen is you need to fill all these tanks, all five of them, and then you're gonna enable a DPS phase on the boss. Try to burn them down as much as you can, and if you don't kill them in that first phase, you'll have to repeat and then finish them off in your second attempt of DPS. Here you see Dr. Mannheim do one of his mechanics where he throws out a fat bastard. They do a ton of damage, so make sure you burst them down or just run up and proc their explosion and run away. And then here you can see the fire spawning on that side of the room, ice on the other. These are the two portals that will be opening up throughout the entire fight and spawning these guys out. Obviously need to do the same thing where we're going to drop and kill them next to the proper containment tank.
Here you see a mechanic where the big tall deviant slams down the ground causing a shockwave. Make sure you're jumping over that. Call it on comms so people can be prepared. And then also right here, Dr. Mannheim starts doing his homing missile attack. Chooses one of your teammates and he's going to keep launching attacks at him. You can keep running around and trying to dodge them or even better yet, stand behind a containment tank and make him run into that. Another tip throughout this entire dungeon is just to constantly clear the ads. They just really start to stack up and be a problem. They'll mess you up on your DPS. They might knock you down. You never want to fall down. So really just clearing the ads first as a priority and then moving to the other targets. Once you kill your last purple people eater, you're going to get a message on the screen and a voice line letting you know it's time to do DPS. It's critical as this thing is time to do as much as you possibly can. We start with the bag on the stomach, which is going to cause a stun to him. And then you're just drilling him the whole time, really trying to not pay attention to any ads if you can help it. Just sort of kite him around and focus damage, because if you can put out enough here, you can kill him in one phase, and it saves you an insane amount of time, ammo, and meds. Now, once you start getting him down, he'll say, feel the wrath of truth. This means he's going to do a repeated big ground slam, so you want to jump up on something. These boxes work just fine, but you'll see right here, he's going to slam a whole bunch of shockwaves out. Keep doing damage during the entire process and take solace in knowing he only does that shit once. So after that, you're good to go to get back in here and keep doing DPS. You can see he's doing the homing missile again. Someone's going to have to deal with that. But other than that, just keep rocking him. As he starts getting lower here, he's going to do another voice line and summon this purple shield. You need to stay within it to do damage. You can't shoot through it. Continue ignoring the ads the best you can and keep DPSing him. You do have a little bit more time before the final five second countdown, which ends the DPS phase. Now towards the very end, he summons another fat bastard on his stomach. We like to blow, blow it up again and get another stun to get our final damage in. Arguably, you probably could just keep DPS on the top of him, but it tends to work out pretty well for us to pop this bag once again and then finish him off. Now, in the event that you do not kill him all the way in phase one, this blue shield, purple shield rather, is going to remain on the battlefield, which is super annoying because when you're trying to kill your big purple people eaters, if they're across from the containment tank you need to fill, you can't shoot through it. So now you have to kite them and bring them over to you. It makes that second phase a lot longer than even the first. Really do your absolute best to try to get through that in one phase. It takes all four guys being pretty dialed in on DPS, so I totally understand if you don't have that, but it should be something you're working towards. This is a section where wings comes in handy because you can skip all of these mobs. There's no reason to fight them. Just sort of glide past everything onto the third fight. Or you can eat shit and die like that because you're using spring legs that drains all your stamina and you can't use your damn flight. Takes some getting used to. It I think it has its advantages, but it definitely could be pretty annoying. And just in case you're an idiot like me and haven't learned your lesson the first time, you can do it again. You can eat shit and die repeatedly here and have to have your homies pick you up and save the run. You know, you're trying to get under 30 minutes and you're over here just jacking around. If you're anything like me, then you'll be doing that too. This third fight is really not a boss fight. It's super easy. What you're going to be doing is killing the big flyer that you can see right here. And once you drop him, he drops a purple orb. You grab that purple orb, and then you're going to pop the colored eggs. There's an egg sack on the left and the right side of the room. And this is what they look like. It doesn't matter what color they are. You're just killing a flyer, taking the orb, and popping each egg.
We have a slight delay here because when one of our guys throws the orbs, I guess he hit another one of our teammates or something, so didn't pop the eggs. We have to kill a third flyer. No big deal. Once you have those orbs, destroy the eggs. And you can see right here, the fight ends and all the ads die. We skip it this run, but right there in that circle is a wall that you can throw a grenade at to break, and behind it is a weapon crate. Here you're just getting past these stupid annoying spitters. I actually learned the mechanic last night, which is that when their blue tongue or the purple tongue is out of their mouth, that means they're not going to shoot. Uh, I didn't know that at this time. I just barely learned it, but that is the tactic to get past these without getting shit on. Now behind this wall is a large room with some clouds. You need to stand next to the containment chambers and shoot the clouds to make them solid, and then you can jump across, and ultimately all you get is another weapon crate. We're skipping it because we're just speed running this thing, but if you want to do it, that is how you go about it. One thing I want to point out is all the water that leads to the boss square, so the water along these pathways is absolutely dangerous and can end your run. Everyone needs to stay on solid ground or fly all the way there, whatever suits your fancy. But if you get downed in the water leading up to this boss area, you might just ruin the entire run. All right, so here's how this room is laid out. You've got your same normal containment tanks in each of the four corners like this. And then on the portals on the left and right, those big portal windows, that's where your flyers are going to spawn. You need to kill those flyers to get their purple orb, and you're going to throw them at the egg sacs, which spawn in these four sections right here. What you're going to end up doing is when these birds spawn, you're going to kill them. They're going to drop a purple orb just like in the last fight. And then you're going to throw that orb at the proper egg sac. You want to pop the egg sac that corresponds to the color of containment tank that you want to fill. So if you want to if you need to fill an ice containment chamber, then you need to pop a blue sack and it'll spawn an ice deviant. If you want to do fire, just the same. And the third one they add here is electric. So if you have an electric containment tank, you need to pop a purple egg sack. The reason I'm shooting that right there is I'm telling my teammate that's a pretty good place to drop down a couple of portable turrets. Although uh, there's actually a better location, which I'll show you here in just a moment. I'm circling these portals right here because these are where the ads are going to spawn. They're going to do it all fight long, all the way until the very end. These little portals pop up and then they spawn in there. You're going to want to burst them down as quick as you can. Later in the fight, it adds even more difficult mobs, so it's absolutely critical you're clearing these. That's why that machine gun turret is pretty solid. Now, the other spot I mentioned that I've started using since this video's creation is right here. You'll have to test out what you like best. I think both are totally viable. Maybe slapping one on each side would, would help out as well, but... Um, you know, it's all just personal preference and seeing what works the best. This fight starts by being able to do two full bars of DPS to the boss while just having basic ad spawns, no flyers or anything yet. We like to split up our forces, so we'll run two guys on the left and two on the right. So when the flyer stage does start, you're always in a position to immediately get both killed and also able to take out all the ads and, and just split up this whole room. It really, you need to split this thing into two sides.
keep your nerves very calm in the beginning because you're not timed on this DPS phase. No matter what, you're going to get two bars of DPS in it. And like I said, the only thing you have to deal with is some really basic ads. So there's really no rush. Go get your turrets popped. Put your scout drone down. Get your position that you want. Clear the ads. And the fight doesn't really begin until you get these first two bars down. You can see the purple shock waves, and it's probably pretty self-explanatory, but you don't want to be hit by them. Typically, they don't really hit you if you're out here, but in some cases, you might need to create a little bit more spacing, but rarely is that ever an issue. Now, once the second bar finishes, she's going to go immune. And here we go. Now, it's time to focus on these ad phases. The flyers are soon to come, but first, you're going to have an ad portal, so you can clear that first while you wait for your first flyer. Both flyers spawn at the exact same time, and as soon as we hear it and see it, we call it out. Because we're going to go ahead and just DPS this thing down as quickly as possible. We don't want it flying out and causing a problem. And so here's the mechanic. You grab the purple orb, and then you pop the color of egg sac that corresponds to the containment tank that you want to fill. In this case, I'm popping a blue one. I could have popped the blue that's actually closer to this tank, but I find that this angle right here that you get is actually a cleaner line of sight than the one close. The one close often gets blocked by the pillar and sort of the ground as well. So I like this longer shot here. Plus I've got a fire in that other corner. So I just figured pop that ice there. And as you can see, you've got a line of sight. Now here we got a little bit of tunnel vision and we're late to this flyer kill. You want to stop everything you're doing and kill the flyers immediately behind spawn. However, if you have turrets, you can see it'll actually draw the flyers aggro, which buys you more time. Without turrets, the thing would have flown out and caused a little bit more of a problem. We're really experienced with it, so we knew we had some time. But best practice is, as soon as you see those flyers portal in, it's time to kill them immediately. Drop everything else you're doing and take out the flyer. This is what I meant from the challenging line of sight. Luckily enough, we're still able to hit, hit it, but if it gets a little too close to you, you actually won't be able to see it. There's a couple times where you won't be able to hit it or you won't be able to hit the weak spot and it can be really annoying. Again, another flyer, we're just taking them down. Both of our tanks are now filled, so it's on our teammates now to get their two tanks filled at this point. Notice I don't shoot that because I know they need it for their tank kill. And then Mother of Life now takes damage pops on the screen. We're going to clear the ads and we have another two bars worth of DPS. Again, ads will continually spawn. We're clearing those as a priority. This time around, it's going to add those ghost dog things to the ad spawns, as you'll see here in a bit. But other than that, these DPS phases are the easiest part. See in this ad spawn here, these are the ghost dogs that we talk about. Those guys are absolutely hellacious. They will chase you down, they will finish you, and not even let you get revived if you're not careful. They are an absolute priority to take out before they start wreaking havoc. When she starts glow glowing blue like that, she's going to cast in these big mortar rain attacks that basically will one shot you no matter what if you get hit by them maybe you have a chance to live for a moment but they are the fucking most broken mechanic there is the only reason you ever get down in this fucking place is because of that mortar rain so when you see that shit you need to be moving paying attention to it the best practice would be to keep on running unless it's not mortaring your side at the moment but it you'll see it's a huge problem you'll get down by it time and time again and finally, we have one more phase of filling the containment breaches. Once we get this done, we'll be able to DPS the boss all the way down to dead. Stay on top of your ad spawns as a priority. Kill your flyers over all else and do the same mechanics. Now, sometimes throughout this fight, the boss will evidently poison you. As you can see, I'm taking this damage over time. It's not the biggest deal in the world. You just need to stay on top of it, making sure you're healing when you when you need to. Um, but, you know, if you do get it, just be mindful of it, that it is something that's going to be whittling you down.
So as you can see, me and my teammate over here have filled both of our containment tanks. And what ends up happening is something that you might come across where on the other side, they didn't have the right color of egg sacs to correspond to their containment tanks. So rather than being done and already going on to the final DPS section, we're having to wait. They're going to have to go cycle through some of those eggs. So they're going to just pop the wrong ones intentionally and kill the big guy that comes out so they can get a new one to spawn until they can get the proper colors. Meanwhile, my buddy here and I are going to stay on this side, clearing ads, clearing the flyers whenever they come out, and lending any assistance across with some cross shots whenever we can to help our, our boys out while they try to figure out the right color of egg sack. And finally, Mother Life now takes damage. They were able to fill their final containment tank. And now it's DPS time. Now this last phase of DPS, they do crank it up a bit. You're gonna have more ghost dogs spawning this time. I think it starts spawning two at a time. You're also gonna have a wave where some big stargazer, like huge flying guys come out. They're super easy, but you'll have to be aware of that. And then the other thing they add is these big blue chain gunner bitches. They can land on these platforms right here on either side of the portal. In our run, I don't know if we just kill it so fast we don't see any, or maybe one spawn on the other side of the room, but if you're really quick about it, you won't even really have to deal with them. But if they do spawn, you need to absolutely take them out. They've got super long range and a high rate of fire. They're a pretty big nuisance. Here's that wave where they have the stargazers. It's only one time they do this, so just absolutely focus it, just like you would with the regular flyers. And there you have it, Leah in under 30 minutes. Go reap your rewards, get your jellyfish deviation, and of course the loot that pops out. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it was pretty clear. I wanted to make sure it was something that was relatively easy to follow. And honestly, if you get these mechanics down, even without having the last Valor or the Boom Boom, you could be using Div Evos or whatever else, you're gonna be able to do this thing in sub 30 a lot easier than you expect. 
And here's a little DPS check to see what we did that run. Really smooth, pretty high damage. I'm pretty happy with that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.